JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for June the 3rd. I am Haralamos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD. I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded lower against all the other major currencies on Thursday during the Asian session Friday. It lost the most ground against the risk linked on the Kiwi and CAT and the list against the safe haven yen, something which suggests that the financial community may have traded in a risk on fashion. In other words, equities may have rebounded. Yes, indeed, looking on uh, this uh, graph here, we see that a major European indices is traded in the green, with the only exception being Spain's IBEX 35, which traded virtually unchanged. UK markets were closed due to a bank holiday, while appetite improved during the US session and stayed supported in Asia today, though China remained closed due to the Dragon Boat Festival. Now, with no clear catalyst behind the rebound, at least in Europe, uh, we suspect that investors may have decided to proceed with some sort of uh, short covering ahead of the US, uh, uh, ahead of the official US employment report for May, uh, due out uh, later uh, today. That said, the steeper gains during the US session and the slide of the dollar may have been the result of the miss in the ADP report. The report showed that during the month of May, the private sector has gained 128,000 jobs, a slowdown from a downwardly revised 202k in April, and well below the forecast of 300k. Now, though the, AD the ADP report has a poor record in predicting the, uh, the private payrolls of the official report due to a different calculation methodology, the miss may have revived some speculation that the Fed could uh, slow down its rate hike uh, process after the summer. However, we remain reluctant to say that this could indeed be the case. Remember that uh, Fed Governor Waller said earlier this week that he would support 50 basis points hikes until inflation comes down, while Vice Chair Brainard said that it's very hard to see the case for a pause after summer. Having all that in mind and also taking into account Chair Powell's remarks that, they are, uh, that uh, he wants to keep raising rates until uh, there is uh, clear and convincing evidence that inflation is coming down, we don't believe that just a, pri a private jobs uh, report is enough uh, to change their mind. However, before we say any big words, we prefer to wait for the official employment data today. Non-farm payrolls are expected to slow to 320,000 from 428,000, while the unemployment rate is expected to have ticked down to 3.5% from 3.6%. Average hourly earnings are forecast to have accelerated to 0.4% uh, month over month from 0.3%, taking the year-over-year -year rate, uh, though, down to 5.2 from 5.5%. In our view, this is a very good report. Despite the slowdown, adding 320,000 jobs at a time when the unemployment rate is falling to 3.5% is nothing but positive. However, the fact that wages are expected to slow may add some validity to the view expressed in the minutes of the latest FOMC meeting that inflation is not expected to worsen. Overall, we believe that such numbers are a double-edged sword. 
on the one hand, the positive jobs growth and unemployment rate numbers could ease fears over a potential slowdown and thereby allow some dollar buying us. This means the Fed could continue tightening without, uh, without the fear of uh, causing a, a recession. But on the other hand, slowing wages on a year-over-year -year basis could prompt some to sell as this may be seen as another sign of inflation cooling somewhat in the next months and thus more participants may become convinced that the Fed may, uh, may need to pause or at least slow its hiking process after summer. Our own view is that the former group may prevail as it is too early to say with certainty that inflation will not accelerate again. After all, in the minutes of the latest FOMC gathering, it was also revealed that policymakers agreed that it is too early to be confident that inflation has already peaked. So, this and the aforementioned hoggish remarks by Fed officials are likely to keep the US dollar relatively supported, in our humble opinion. Now, in case we see a big miss compared to the current forecasts, yes, the US dollar is very likely to slide. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, a greater weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next week. JFT, just fair and direct.